Well, <clears throat> 2019 was marked by some severe natural disasters, and uh, the worst of, of all of them was probably uh, waging wildfires in Brazil and Russia. Only in summer alone, they brought, they wiped out completely around four million hectares of forest there. And as a Russian-born citizen, for me that was a really tragic news. So I started researching in the, into the topic and how it came to this. Uh, I found out that the wildfires could have actually been prevented if not for the mistreatment of authorities. Just look at these statements. Amazon is bigger than Europe. How would you put out wildfires on such a big territory? Or uh, here is a quote from a, a congressman and a governor uh, from Russia. Wildfires are natural. We've never put them out, so uh, why starting? Well, these statements, at least I had a feeling, they're completely logically wrong. And this was a moment of realization, huge realization for me. Uh, I understood at that point that our daily life and our society as a whole is influenced hugely by political decisions based on flawed logic. So this is how I got interested uh, on the term logical fallacies and now let me explain to you what they are in a really simple manner. First of all, logical fallacies, imagine you're in a discussion. Typically there is you and your opponent and you're trying to make a claim B. You just say B is right and your opponent says no. So you disagree? what would you typically try to do? First, the, the first uh, way to, to uh, persuade the opponent is to try to bring as many arguments as possible to prove your claim. Uh, and this arrow in the middle, by the way, is called logical connection or inference, so in logic science. And the whole structure is actually called logical form. Uh, and it reads like this, if A is true, then B is true as well. But what are logical fall fallacies then? Well, a logical fallacy occurs when you start messing around with all of that structure. Uh, a first type could be if you just provide a wrong argument. Uh, another type of a fallacy could be that the argument itself is correct, but you draw different or flawed conclusions from it. Um, another type is when you completely replace the topic of the discussion and you start deviating. Uh, it is very important to mention that logical fallacies can occur uh, unintentionally as well as on purpose. So some people they just don't realize that their reasoning is flawed, but some people, especially eager to prove their point, uh, they do them on purpose. And they don't stop there, actually they, they move on and they start involving other, uh, other elements of the discussion uh, to prove their point. For example, they can attack your personality, they can use ambiguous language, and they can even play with emotions or feelings of the audience to gain their attention. Well, in total, there are more of 150 different fallacies, at least on Wikipedia. Uh, we don't need to go through all of them. Let's focus on quite a few today. Uh, I will bring a couple of examples for every of these type of logical fallacies. So without further ado, let's start. The first example would be a loaded question. So loaded question by definition is a question which contains a very questionable assumption in it. So sometimes it's, it's depicted as a question mark with a bomb. And why bomb? Because this question is basically acts as a bomb in the discussion. So it's thrown at you, and whatever you say, you cannot prove your point. You will always be wrong. Let's try to uh, bring a specific example here. So suppose we're talking about abortion. And abortion is a really, really controversial topic in the society. Some people are opponents to it. And imagine that I'm a typical opponent, so I say, um, Abortion basically means to kill people. So do you understand, I'm saying to my opponent, do you understand that by supporting abortions, you're supporting killing people? Well, the, this whole logical connection is basically valid as long as abortion definitely I I is in fact killing people. But is it though? This is a good question. Uh, so you can see that the problem and the bomb lies exactly in that assumption. And it rests on, on, an, on another assumption that a fetus which is being aborted is a real human being, which is not scientifically proven yet, and people, some, some people may disagree with that. So that makes all of this structure flawed. Let's continue with a different example. Now we're exploring another type of logical fallacies where the logical conclusion itself is, is wrong. And the first one would be false cause. I'm sure you, uh, you've heard this definition quite a lot. Correlation is not the same as causality. So correlation is when two things, two events, happen at the same time. Causality means, on the other hand, and furthermore, that one of these events is causing the other. And this is not always the same thing. So this is how it works. 
imagine we're talking about some pharmaceuticals and I'm a pharmaceutical lobbyist, let's say in the Congress, I'm trying to back up a, a new law which would uh, generate new, new medicine. And I'm arguing the following manner. Uh, have you known that the recent scientific studies actually found out that uh, people with a l l higher levels of HDL cholesterol, which is, by the way, a good type of cholesterol, uh, normally uh, tend to have heart attacks uh, less frequently, so less often. Uh, well, probably, uh, I'm therefore, um, I'm arguing that we need to produce medicine with HDL cholesterol to decrease the risk of heart attacks in people. Well, this is actually not quite true, even th though it may seem so at the first sight, because there are other uh, scientific research which shows that there is a third factor, sports activity, which influences both of the factors, both cholesterol and the reduced risk of heart attack. So uh, those two are actually not causing one another. Let's move on to a different example of uh, flawed inference, and it's called cherry picking. This is a very interesting one. And I would say the most disguised, the most sophisticated. So it's when, when a person tries to find a data pattern to fit their claim. Uh, and it, it is called cherry picking because that's what we normally do. If we want to pick a berry from a bush, we typically take the, the best looking one or the most fruitful one and we leave the others. And that's what, what is happening in reality. So suppose we are talking in that case about climate change. And I'm trying to make a point that climate change is not human caused, but rather volcanoes are known to emit around 200 million tons of CO2 per year. So obviously volcanoes are causing global warming, right? Which is not completely true either, because here it is exactly this one cherry taken from the whole data panel. If you look at the wider data set, it uh, actually occurs that 24 billion tons of CO2 is caused by human activity. So you need to take a look on the whole sp scope of data in order to make such claims. Let's move on. Uh, another type of example in this, um, in this logical fallacy group would be appeal to authority. This is also a very common one. It basically means that someone is trying to use a very respected opinion, an opinion of a very respected uh, person in the society, to put it weight to, to prove their point and to discredit you. So saying we're talking currently about AIDS, uh, it is scientifically proven that AIDS is caused by HIV, which is a virus which you could occasionally get having sex with uh, infected people. That's why we all use protection in order to protect ourselves from HIV. But what if I told you that Kerry Mullis, who actually happens to be a biochemist and even a Nobel Prize laureate, held his own scientific research and he disagreed, he found out that uh, HIV doesn't cause AIDS. So does it mean that we don't need to have protected sex anymore? Well, this appears to be wrong as well. And this is probably would be quite obvious in that example that we shouldn't listen to one person's opinion in order to uh, judge. However, you can probably feel the weight of the Nobel Prize winner and how it can confuse you in that particular case. Let's move on to another type of logical fallacies where the claim itself is, is replaced. So this is probably the funniest one because here's when the discussion goes completely off topic. So it is called strawman, uh, and it's called like this because that's what your opponent is trying to do. So they are trying to create a dummy of your claim in order to make it easier to attack. So let's move on to a different example. And here we're talking about laws banning beer advertising. So say you would argue that beer is actually quite unharmful. This is a mild and soft uh, alcohol drink. So why don't we just relax laws on beer advertising? And your opponent says, no, we should absolutely not do that because, we, because drugs are evil to the society and we should ban them completely. Technically speaking, beer contains alcohol and alcohol is considered to be a drug. However, drugs are a wider category. They also include narcotics, so obviously this argument is stronger uh, and it's misplaced as you can see. On the one hand, your previous argument doesn't make sense. On the other hand, probably your opponent will take the attention of your audience because they play with their emotions. Let's use another, another example here uh, and talk about uh, Stroman in a different case. So suppose we're on a presidential uh, conference and one, you, you are a newspaper journalist and you're saying that there is a new power plant being constructed in North Carolina and it's projected to pollute all of the rivers. So, Mr. President, could you please ban this power plant construction? And I would, my response to you would be, 
How dare you prevent pr creation of new workplaces? How dare you? They, you should be ashamed. So as you can see, the, the claim again is tweaked here. And my previous, your previous bad image of, of the uh, plant construction is replaced with uh, another pro of, of this uh, plant construction. So the argument doesn't make sense anymore. And the final logical fallacy we would focus today, uh, it is called Tukoke, and it's basically uh, a personality attack. Uh, it's when your opponent is trying to damage your, or undermine your credibility to prove you wrong. And it is called Tukoke because Tukoke stands on in Latin for uh, even you. And these were the, the words uh, said by Julius Caesar when he saw that he was stabbed by Brutus, even you. So it resonates a lot with finger pointing, and that's how it goes. So again, we're talking about climate change. You're making a point that climate change should be stopped. And my response to you would be, Mr. Opponent, as far as I remember, you also travel by planes, so you're probably contribu contributing significantly to air pollution as well. So could you please shut up? And you're not the eligible person to talk about this whatsoever. So in the real discussion, uh, the takeaway here is that uh, sometimes what, what your opponent basically does, uh, they're pointing out that you're not following your own rules and your, your own uh, standpoint which you're advocating for. And you could be potentially confused by that. Don't fall into that trap. What are the key takeaways of our talk today? So first of all, logical fallacies, what are they? They're flawed or incorrect ways to connect arguments with, with the claims they're supposed to prove. And secondly, and this is very important, there are a lot of logical fallacies. Sometimes they're disguised. Sometimes it's very difficult to spot them because they're hidden in an ambiguous language. The most, the, the easiest way to be able to combat them is to learn all of them. So please, you're welcome to Wikipedia. Just read all the articles by 150. Please let me end my talk on the note that I deeply believe that if we all refrain from using such techniques in our own uh, reasoning, I think that the world will be better off and the society will have better uh, quality of public discussions in our society. Thank you. I need to sip my glue vine. <laughs> so we said everyone uses logical fallacies, and it means you use them too. How dare you talk about them then? <laughs> I see one question over there. <coughs> Hi, thanks a lot for the presentation. It's really interesting. So one question. Not every one of us, actually every one of us is, not, is only um, expert in one area. So that mm -hmm. means there are so many things that we really don't know. How can we recognize the logical fallacies for the area that we have no idea about? Because I think when you argue in a specific area, the, some of the arguments just, th that's why they're called logical fallacies, because you recognize these logical patterns and you can fit, as, as you've seen, right? I've also brought examples from different areas, right? But they all fit this logical form. Uh, and it is just pretty simple to recognize it uh, if, if maybe you do some extra research, as in the case with volcanoes, but most of them are actually easily recognizable, disregardless of your area. I just have the feeling that it's in the newspaper every day. It's like a lot of logical fallacies. It's not possible to do, you know, do every research for every topic. So, yeah. Well, actually, if you go to the... So there are even websites which collect very frequent climate change fallacies. I think there are also like around uh, 40 arguments. There are even like real blogs and forums which are dedicated to this topic. So there are, I would say, common ones in each, in each area. If I can also suggest something else. You said you're afraid you're not an expert in every topic. Well, come to our following events and it's only a matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> so any other questions? I see one raised hand over there. Hi, uh, thanks for the lovely talk. It was very interesting. Um, which one of the fallacies do you think is the hardest to recognize for yourself? For you myself, <clears throat> I would say that so cherry picking is is very hard to recognize because that goes in the direction what the lady before you to said. You need to be aware of the data scope in each field. And y if you're not a professional, it would be difficult for you. One other question in the middle. 
Thank you. Uh, very engaging talk. Uh, I have a question uh, regarding the use of uh, fallacies by autocrats, dictators, and uh, <laughs> so forth. And uh, so, for instance, uh, President Trump has once claimed that the Mexicans are rapists and drug dealers. So, yeah. but we have seen that this was uh, this was really widely uh, uh, circulated in the media. And uh, I have also read a lot of reports of the people who are really supporting this, this very uh, uh, dangerous idea. Now we know that with the help of uh, social media and mass media, dictators and autocrats are using fallacies very efficiently. So mm -hmm. uh, what's your take on that? So how yeah. a general public can fight with this fight, logical yeah. fallacy? Mm -hmm. so in an ideal world, <laughs> if I were president, I would introduce a, a beep beep sound every time someone says it. But I think that actually Facebook is working on developing some uh, AI and machine learning based algorithms to recognize fake news. And that's how they work. I think the, the first, um, uh, first principles which they're integrating into these mechanisms are actually based on logical fails. So they just uh, analyze the natural language and they try to connect uh, the the sense of the of the sentences, and they come come to the conclusion that the news is fake. So I think they're working on it. Interesting. So I can post lies on Facebook anymore. Okay. I guess we would have time for one more sh short question of the guy in the blue T-shirt. So I just have this person question to you. Uh, what do you think about religion and these fallacies? How do you connect those? And what is your thinking upon all this? Do you yeah, well, uh, I'm personally an atheist. Okay, but... Uh, okay. But, yeah, what, what, was the, what was the question so, again? Uh, so, I mean, religion and all, the, all these sacred texts, they have their own uh, explanations and they have their own, uh, you know, beliefs. And people believe in them, a lot of people believe in them. How do you connect the, your talk and your logics uh, to uh, religious people? How do you convince them uh, with all of this? I don't think you, like, really need to... Uh, try to aggressively convince of someone not, of, of something. Not, so um, I think that that religion is a private matter of every person, every individual. Mm. Uh, and um, obviously, there are a lot of videos on YouTube on people, and especially uh, atheists, who try to debug kind of all these beliefs. But that contributes a lot to conflict, maybe in the society. So I would try to to keep it calm, uh, at least at least this particular matter. So you're censoring it, right? I mean, hmm? you are trying to censor, censor it. I mean, you're not... Keeping it private means you are trying to not talk about it. Mm. I mean, there should be a clear... It, there shouldn't be, but I mean, there should be, right? Logically. Yeah. You, I, I think you need to talk about such things. Yeah. You definitely need. But in, uh, with a very specific set of rules so that uh, the discussion is kept uh, ethical. Uh, and no side is trying to really mm, convince somebody of something because that's a private matter. I guess it has been a few millennia, the discussion which God has it right. So I guess you'll have enough time to figure <laughs> it out afterwards too. Thanks for the question. Thank you for your talk. Yeah.